The mass gain phase started on January 8th with an official weigh-in of 195 pounds. As of making this video, my heaviest daily weigh-in was a very high 204 pounds. A nine pound gain in two weeks, you might think. Not really. Body weight will fluctuate every day, depending on how many calories you consume the day prior, how much water you've drank, how much you've slept, stress, fatigue, and so many other factors. That's why it's really important not just to track your weight on a random day, but actually track your weekly average weight. That's regardless if you're gaining or you're cutting. I personally weigh myself every single day, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. And then I take my average weight for the week every seven days. Starting weight was 195 pounds. Week one, my average weight went up to 196.9 pounds, a total average gain of 1.9 pounds. For week two, the average weekly weight went up to 199.5 pounds for a weekly gain of 2.5 pounds. Total weight gain here for the last two weeks was a total of 4.4 pounds. Now, that is pretty aggressive and honestly, it's a bit faster than ideal. I won't lie. In only two weeks, of course, this is not all muscle mass. A lot of it's water glycogen and just bloat. But also keep in mind that when we calculate lean mass, most people honestly think that that just means pure muscle. But lean mass is actually anything that's not fat mass. That means water, glycogen, bone mass. These are all things that can affect how much lean mass you carry. And it also register on a body fat reading. So now obviously in those two weeks, the amount of muscle mass gained is pretty minimal. And that weight gain is simply the result of dietary changes I've made. However, a good chunk of that is of course lean mass. And the diet changes alone will cause me to gain a bit more glycogen and hold on to a little bit more water. So just keep that in mind that as you start a new diet phase, whether it's gaining or dieting, those quick changes made to the scale within the first week or two, those are almost always changes in water weight and glycogen. Again, lean mass, but not actually muscle tissue or fat tissue. Those real changes take much longer time. So let's talk about the diet changes I've made and the overall approach to this mass gain phase, as well as the cardio that I'm doing and how I plan to change the plan as we progress. Now, during my previous maintenance phase, my calories were approximately 3,000 calories per day. There were definitely some flexibility with the macros, but here's a rough breakdown. Protein was at 225 to 250 grams of protein per day. Carbohydrates were about 350 grams per day. And fat was roughly 70 grams per day. Now, to kick off this phase of training. Protein is kept the same as I'm hitting where I generally like to be, which is about 1.25 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And because the carbs and fats were already at the minimum requirement I like, the next step to start this gaining phase was simply just to increase my calories. So the changes I made in the starting macros were 250 grams of protein, 400 grams of carbs, and 100 grams of fat. That brings me up to about 500 additional calories daily. This is fairly aggressive, but if you watched my previous video breaking down the approach to this gaining phase, you'll know that aggressive is the goal. I wanna gain, I wanna get in, and I wanna get out. Now, of course, muscle growth takes time, but based on my goals at the moment, I don't wanna spend an entire year in a gaining phase while also trying to stay lean. For this phase, I'm okay with putting on a bit of fluff and then just dieting off after. And so far, two weeks in, no diet changes have been made to the plan yet. But once my weight does stall, it will be time to increase those calories and most likely the next bump in calories will come from an increase in carbs. Only other thing worth mentioning with this diet plan is currently I'm implementing one cheat meal per week. And really I should call it a cheat meal in quotes because I'm really not going over my calories when I have this meal. And it's simply something just to include in my diet plan to keep it a bit more interesting as I'm honestly not a huge fan of eating a ton of food and just pushing calories very high. Personally, I'm already having having days where eating this many calories just feels like a chore. But of course, it is a necessary evil and part of the plan. So once per week, I'll have a meal that's off plan that will allow me to enjoy my food a bit more and hit those additional calories. For the last two weeks so far, for me, that's just been pizza. And the night before my heavy 204 pound weigh-in in the morning, I did have three slices of pizza for my last meal of the day. But it actually fit right into my calorie and macro goals for the day. But that still caused a huge spike in the weigh-in in the next morning. That's just simply the result of a food sensitivity. Activity. It's not muscle growth, it's not fat storage, it's just simply water weight that I'm gonna drop off in a few more days. Now let's touch on This is the first time I've ever included regular cardio in a gaining phase. And my approach to cardio in general, especially year round, 
has always just been step count. I like to get 10K steps in as a baseline. Sometimes I'll lower that during a gaining phase, especially if I need to decrease my energy expenditure. And sometimes I'll increase that in the dieting phase when I need to increase my energy expenditure. It's a pretty simple approach. And honestly, it doesn't really need to get more complicated than that. I've even had plenty of contest prep athletes that have gotten into shape just simply counting daily step count. It's a simple recipe that's worked time and time again. So if that's the case, why am I adding traditional cardio, especially to a gaining phase? I actually spend a ton of time sitting each day between my coaching services, creating new plans for clients, adjusting programs, and as well as all the work I do on social media. I'm easily sitting down for six to eight hours per day. And besides the 90 minutes or so that I'm in the gym weight training, I'd only actually be racking up about 2,500 steps per day. But in order to keep myself moving and to keep myself healthy, I keep my daily step count at 10,000 steps per day. In order to accomplish this, I do have to go for daily walks. I actually have a walking pad at my house that I use even during working sometimes, but I do make it a point to spend 30 minutes on the Stairmaster per day. Not just to hit that step count, but this also helps me get my heart rate elevated. Now, this part is generally more for general health purposes, but it also has the nice benefit of increasing my recovery from my weight training sessions. Low intensity steady state cardio gets your heart rate elevated, just enough to increase that blood flow, and in turn, that greatly enhances your recovery without adding any additional fatigue. Now, if you work a fairly active job or you're on your feet all day long, you're probably getting enough active recovery in daily to not need to do cardio. But if you sit down all day like me, you can probably benefit from a little bit of light cardio in your routine. But keep in mind that this does fall into my daily step count. So it also helps me hit that goal faster than just simply walking. So now that's the plan. I covered my training in the first video. This touches on diet and cardio. Now, how does this plan evolve over time? I'll keep monitoring my logbook every single week, and so far I've been able to consistently push more weight in the gym or perform more reps with the same weight. Now, if training starts to stall and I can't add more weight or I can't add more reps, I'll actually increase the training volume. However, if recovery is taking a hit, I will implement some additional rest days along with the standard deloads that I have built into the program. Now, if weight stalls, I'll add in additional calories. And what I do is every single week on a weekly basis, I take a look at all the variables and I adjust them as needed. But so far, no changes have needed to be made. So as a result, I'm gonna keep running the plan as is until I need to do so. And I also plan to keep you guys updated along the way. If you guys have found this helpful and you do want the training programs to follow that I recommend to build more muscle, you can find all my old school mass game programs down below. And as always, if you want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.